I've been talking about cancel culture and James Madison. I now want to talk about the extension of the same cancel principle to the Canadian psychologist Jordan Peterson. Not sure if uh, you're familiar with uh, Jordan Peterson, but Jordan Peterson sort of, you may say, uh, emerged on the scene several years ago as a psychologist who was challenging a lot of the entrenched uh, doctrines of the left. Uh, and specifically, uh, the whole doctrine that there are no such thing as men and women. There's no important distinction between the two sexes. People can be whatever sex that they choose to be. And, and Jordan Peterson was bringing uh, a, a wealth of, of credentials, uh, of intellectual sophistication, uh, of understanding of human biology, but also understanding of human psychology, to, you may say, call BS on this uh, on this whole project. And it became kind of a sensation, not just because he was a, cr a, a critic of the woke, but also because a lot of young men who themselves feel a little bit lost, they are a little confused, they hear all this stuff about manliness, They um, and, and really what the left is doing is, is uh, presenting a notion of manliness that's kind of unmanly, at least unmanly by traditional or historical standards, and it leaves uh, um, young boys who are growing up to be men a little befuddled, and so it was uh, refreshing for them to hear. And so Jordan Peterson would, he became a, almost kind of a rock star. He'd go from, he'd have these large speaking events, he, almost like they were put on by Live Nation or one of these tour groups, and you'd have large numbers of young people, uh, mostly male, uh, listening to him and kind of holding on to his every insight. Then Jordan Peterson uh, developed a kind of a serious illness. He withdrew, but now he's back, and so the he, and he's back uh, in a big way on Twitter. And he posted recently, uh, breaking the Ontario College of Psychologists uh, has demanded that I submit myself to mandatory social media communication retraining <laughs> with their experts for, among other things. Um, retweeting, and he names a guy who's a kind of a, a, a um, classical liberal, and criticizing Justin Trudeau and his political allies. So, you know, when we talk about governments going after their political opponents, that's going on in Canada also. And in some ways, it seems to be even, even worse. Um, and um, I'm continuing here with Peterson. I've been accused of harming people although none of the complainants involved in the current situation were clients of mine, past or present. He goes, I am to take a course in such training with documents documenting my, quote, progress, or face an in-person tribunal and suspension of my right to operate as a licensed clinical psychologist. And he says that this is all in response to about a dozen people who submitted complaints about his public statements on Twitter. He also went on the Joe Rogan show. So this craziness is not, it's all around us. And evidently it is, it is um, I'm quite sure it's in Europe. It's probably reached the far shores of Australia and New Zealand. Um, and it's very much uh, in Canada. Uh, Elon Musk, by the way, took notice of this and he told Jordan Peterson, he goes, this is crazy. And he told Peterson, you need to talk about this on Twitter. Have one of those so-called Twitter spaces where you are able to discuss it and people can listen in. By the way, a very cool feature of Twitter where thousands, even tens of thousands of people can kind of listen in to someone having a public conversation. I might do one of those myself on Twitter. So um, will Jordan Peterson survive this? I think he will. Frankly, his reputation is bigger and all the little idiots in his department or in this agency that are trying to sort of bring him down. But isn't it tragic that they, you can take someone who's an established reputation as a clinical psychologist and try to put their professional credentials in jeopardy for doing nothing more than political dissent and questioning the woke orthodoxies of our time?